When plotting the frequency response of a filter, we frequently need to cover a wide range of frequency values and also a wide range of um, magnitude values. So to accomplish this, we use logarithmic scaling. So, and the plot that uh, of the frequency response using logarithmic scaling is known as the Bode plot or the Bode plot. The Bode plot consists of a horizontal axis of omega, but it's graphed on a log scale. On a log scale, the constant separation represents a multiple of, in the case of base 10, a multiple of 10. So at this point here, we've got 1. Coming over this distance is 10 times 1, or 10. This distance here is now 10 times 10, or 100, then 1,000, 10,000, 10 to the 5th, 10 to the 6th, and so on. Along the horizontal scale of our Bode plot of the frequency response, we plot what is known as the decibel. The decibel, or the dB, is defined as, I guess I should say that x in units of dB is defined as 20 times the log base 10 of x. So for example, if the magnitude of the, the uh, frequency response was, say, 10, in dB, that would be 20 times the log base 10 of 10. Well, the log base 10 of 10 is 1. 20 times 1 is 20. So an amplitude of 10, magnitude of 10 in a linear scale, would correspond to 20 dB, or 20 decibels. So let's go ahead and construct the Bode plot, which is nothing more than a log-log plot, of the frequency response of our low-pass filter. You'll recall that we have the magnitude of the transfer, or of the uh, frequency response, magnitude of h of j omega is equal to omega sub c over the square root of omega squared plus omega sub c squared, where for our RL filter, omega sub c was just r over l, um, and we have that then for all omega. Now, we've seen that at the cutoff frequency in the filter that we've currently been working with, the cutoff frequency was 100. So at 100 radians per second, the cutoff frequency or the magnitude of the frequency response at the cutoff frequency was 3 dB less than the frequency response maximum value, or h max. So from zero out to the cutoff frequency, it only drops about 3 dB. Now, what happens as we continue to allow the frequency omega to increase from the cutoff frequency? Well, at some point, or as omega, as omega gets larger, this omega squared term starts to dominate the denominator term. As we get far enough away from omega sub c, omega squared plus omega sub c to a good approximation is just omega squared. So we have then, as omega increases, and again, keep in mind we're covering huge ranges, you know, going from 1 to 100. On this graph here, we'll go out to 100 million radians per second. So within this compressed scale, you don't have to go very far along the axis to see large increases in frequency. So as omega increases, the magnitude, magnitude of h of j omega, becomes very close to omega sub c over the square root of omega squared, which is just omega sub c over omega. Again, this is just an approximation, but as omega gets bigger, this expression here starts to look more and more like this. And the, trans or the uh, frequency response function appears to be falling off as 1 over omega. So let's now plot two points on this Bode plot. Let's have the first point be at some frequency omega sub x. And then we will look at a um, point at 10 times omega sub x. Now, in a logarithmic scale, when you move 10 times, say from 100 to 1,000, we refer to that difference as a decade. 
So you have one decade from one to ten, another decade from ten to twenty, uh, ten to one hundred, another decade from a hundred to a thousand, from a hundred from a thousand to ten thousand, ten thousand to hundred thousand. Each of those increments represent one decade. So at omega sub x, again assuming that omega sub x is significantly larger than the cutoff frequency, the magnitude of h of j omega sub x then will equal omega sub c over omega. In decibels, that will be 20 log base 10 of omega sub c over omega. Now, at one decade out, or 10 omega sub x, the magnitude of our frequency response, h of j 10 omega sub x, will be approximately equal to omega sub c divided by 10 omega sub x. And that right here should be omega sub x. In decibels, <coughs> In decibels, that will be 20 times the log base 10 of 1 tenth times omega sub c over omega sub x. Using the product, fun the product rule of logs, we have then once again 20 log base 10 of 1 tenth plus 20 log base 10 of omega sub c over omega sub x. Well, log base 10 of 1 tenth is negative 1. So this term right here, then, is going to be negative 20. Let's change the order of this. And we have, then, that in dB, the magnitude of the frequency response at 10 times omega sub x is equal to 20 log base 10 of omega sub c over omega sub x minus 20 db. Well, this term right here, the 20 log base 10 of omega sub c over omega sub x, that's just the value of the frequency response at omega sub x. Omega sub x was some frequency significantly distant from the cutoff frequency so that this approximation held that the, that the, the um, frequency response was approximately at omega sub c over omega. So here we are at omega sub c over omega sub x, which is the magnitude of the frequency response at the frequency omega sub x. In dB, it's this quantity. Through this little bit of algebra, we saw that the magnitude of the frequency response at a frequency 10 times as great as omega sub x, the magnitude of the frequency response is 20 dB less than the magnitude of the, trans of the frequency response at omega sub x. So, too many words, let's just take a look at it. Let's just assume that we were out here at maybe a 1,000. And at 1,000, let's assume maybe that um, omega sub x equaled 1,000. And at that frequency, the frequency response in dB was negative 40 dB. If we go 10 times that frequency, so from omega sub x equaling, equaling 1,000 to 10 times 1,000 or 10,000, so here we are at 1,000, here we are at 10,000, the magnitude of the frequency response is going to be 20 dB less at 10,000 than it was at 1,000. And you can continue on, and what you'll see is that for every decade increase in frequency, the magnitude of the frequency response will drop off by 20 dB. On a Bode plot, or a log-log plot, that then becomes a straight line with a slope of negative 20 dB per decade. So when we're growing the, or drawing, sketching a Bode plot, you can pretty well just draw a straight line out to the cutoff frequency and then start a straight line dropping off at 20 dB per decade. And after you've got that, then you just simply say, well, it's not exactly 
This point is actually 3 dB down below the maximum value at the cutoff frequency. So with a little bit of a, a little bit of a sketching out, not drawing that really well, without too much effort you can sketch the frequency response in, on a log log plot or the Bode plot for a filter. Here we have the actual computer drawn Bode plot. You'll notice here we are at the cutoff frequency of 100 radians per second. It's a low pass filter. Along this side, the units are decibels. And along this side, um, axis here, it is a log base 10 of the frequency. So here we are at the cutoff frequency. Well, first of all, here we are at H max. In dB, a maximum value, H max was 1, so 20 times the log base 10 of 1, log base 10 of 1. Let's write it down. 20 log base 10 of 1. Well, the log of 1 is 0. So in dB, a linear scale of 1 becomes 0. At the cutoff frequency, it has dropped down 3 dB from its maximum value. And then as you move away from the cutoff frequency, as the frequency continues to increase, it becomes more and more like a straight line sloping down with a slope of minus 20 dB per decade.